Hello football officials, this is Jason Nickleby, coordinator of officials with the Minnesota State High School League. This is football officiating training tape number one. Uh, really excited that the kids and the coaches and the officials have an opportunity uh, to have football this fall. It was a uh, touch and go there for quite a while and we're hopeful we can keep this going as long as possible. Um, to assist you in that effort, we are going to put out several training tapes this year discussing mechanics, philosophy, positioning, and again, you don't have to necessarily agree with everything that is said on these training tapes, but hopefully it sparks a dialogue amongst the crew so you can discuss how you would handle these plays or similar if they happen in your games. We also have a training tape regarding the new rules uh, and the COVID adjustments and protocols, as well as the new mechanics for the umpire and the line of scrimmage officials and how that will be worked out this year. All of these tapes are available on the Minnesota State High School League YouTube account. We will send this out as a link and all future training tapes as a link as well. So uh, have a great season. Uh, stay healthy and safe. We need you. We're proud of all of you. Um, and if you need anything, reach out to a coordinator. Uh, they're here to help. And uh, with that, let's take a look at some plays. On this first play, you'll notice that we snap inside the 10. So line of scrimmage officials, we are going to go to the five at the snap and then float uh, towards the goal line as the play develops and we read that. And we see that we have a catch, no catch interception play at the goal line. So line of scrimmage will wanna read that the pass is imminent and then move to the goal line. Make sure that we have a sideline that is clear um, so that we can slide and move to the goal line and work backwards as necessary. Um, we have to do that prior to the snap, otherwise we're going to be running into folks uh, that don't belong there. Make sure that uh, they are back and you have plenty of room uh, to work and officiate uh, with some depth. What I like here, uh, back judges, is he comes in, sees that we have an interception, Two calm swipes indicates touchback and points. So just really calm, under control, um, very nicely done. Um, back judges from an initial position, remember snap inside the 15, our initial position is at the end line. And I can tell from this view that that was the case here, which is great. Um, only thing is back judges, if we just stick around in the middle of the field or in the neighborhood of the middle, we really won't have to adjust our positioning to officiate this play. If we just stay in the middle of the field, we're probably in good shape. But I like that we come at an angle to get a better uh, handle on catch, no catch, and on the interception. So uh, line of scrimmage officials break to the five, then float to the goal line. Back judges start in the middle of the field at the end line and then adjust as necessary um, this is well handled mechanically and position wise. Uh, just a couple things to tweak, but overall, uh, well done by the crew. On this play, I want to take a look at the mechanics at the bottom of the screen by the line of scrimmage official. We do a really nice job of squaring off, knowing the line to gain, and then you see the very subtle point in front of his chest indicating that we've reached the line to gain uh, communicating with the referees. So this is excellent mechanics, squares off, not rounding it, nice, uh, subtle, clear communication of the referee that we've gained a line to gain. Um, the only slight adjustment I would say is line of scrimmage officials, if we know that the line to gain uh, is close or is going to be a key aspect. So you'll see on this play, it's fourth down and one. Um, we know that the line to gain is the most important line at this at this stage on this play. I would just hold the line. Typically on a regular running play, we would work backwards a little bit like this and let it come in front of us, which I like. On a play where we're dealing with the line to gain, I would maybe hold the line um, and then adjust to the line to gain uh, as your initial movement and then slide down the field uh, as the runner gains more yardage. So uh, we get an excellent spot here. Um, we have great square off mechanics. We know the line to gain, kill the clock, indicate first down to the referee. So that's all very well done. 
Um, we just want to make sure that on maybe a longer play where it's say two or three yards to go, uh, we would want to slide down to the line to gain and then adjust uh, versus working into the offensive backfield, which might uh, take away our perspective on the uh, progress spot. But overall, uh, excellent mechanics by the line judge. On this play, we have second and 11. We read pass, and then we release, coming down in the white, working nice and deep, give us a good perspective on this play, and then we square off. This is excellent coverage by the linesman at the top of the screen. The back judge closes very nicely, um, is in good position to assist, and we have a nice progress spot. So just really good coverage on this pass play. Um, by the line scrimmage official and the back judge on this play. Um, typically, we are going to hold the line until the pass is imminent, and then we will release. Uh, try to stay in the white, as this linesman does here, so that you have uh, more depth and width to observe. The other thing I want to point out on this play is, if you notice once the play is over, you'll see that we triangle the ball into the umpire, which is proper mechanics, and you see once the umpire has the ball in his hands and he's near the inbound spot that the referee winds the game clock. This is excellent mechanics. This is proper play clock mechanics and pacing. This is exactly what we want. Um, so you see the umpire there in the screen and then the clock starts. This is excellent coverage and mechanics by the line of scrimmage and back judge. Great job of the umpire getting down to the inbound spot and then a very nice job by the referee of starting the clock properly. When the umpire has the ball in his hands near the inbound spot, that's when we should start the game clock. Now, it doesn't mean that they are able to snap it, but that's when we should start the game clock. If clock is a factor, we should slow it down a little bit, but in this case, we should be winding at this time and we do that properly. So very well done by the crew on this play. Okay, we have a scrimmage kick on this play. So let's talk mechanics, positioning, and how we adjust throughout the play. So first, we saw the umpire in the screen in good initial position, um, off the typical tight end type position, about two to three yards deep of the kicker. Remember that our initial responsibility is the snapper, uh, left guard, and left tackle, and we can assist as blocks and players come into our zone. So we're in good initial position. Also line of scrimmage at the bottom of the screen in very good initial position, at least one yard off the sideline into the restricted area. And then the back judge is in good position, uh, several yards behind the return man, shading to the chain side. Um, so this is very well handled from an initial mechanic standpoint. One thing to mention, remember that line judge and linesman, we are switching positions at halftime. It's likely that the chains will now be on the home, time, home side of the field, wherever that may be. Um, so that means that the line judge, the person, will be on the home team side in the first half. Um, so in the first half, the linesman, the person, is going to release uh, at the snap on punts like on this play and then the second half we will flip otherwise all of our responsibilities and mechanics and coverages will be the same uh, the only other thing to mention on this is I really like how the back judge handles this uh, he's in very good position he's shaded towards the chain side he's in position to view blocks and the return man to see what he does for signal uh, muff um, illegal blocks, etc. So we're in really good position to see that. And then once, once this play comes to a conclusion, he very calmly steps up, a couple of swipes, views players, and points. So just very well handled, very nicely done. If this play goes a little bit further upfield, we can release uh, forward progress to either the line judge or the linesman. But since it's so close to where this ball was caught and he doesn't really advance very far, totally fine for the back judge to pick up the spot. Not really worried about forward progress. We want to make sure we get illegal blocks. 
um, and those types of things, which the back judge does a great job of, of being in very good position uh, initially behind the return man, views the catch, lets the return man go towards the chain side, then he offici officiates inside out, a couple swipes, step up to the spot, views players, and points. So just very well handled by the crew. Okay, scrimmage kick again. Uh, we're in good initial position. Just be ready for a bad snap and be ready to adjust referees and umpires. And you see how the punt goes near the sideline, a little short, back judge comes up uh, and closes, but not too close so that he still can view blocks and signaling. But notice here in the screen, we're gonna see a player without a helmet on. Um, we have to make sure that we get near players, see this sort of thing. This should be an unsportsmanlike conduct foul uh, on the return team uh, for having a player out on the field to play without a helmet on. So make sure that uh, we're viewing players. When we are the uh, referee in this case, um, or line of scrimmage, or even back judges on long plays, if we signal touchdown, remember we need to act like there is a uh, video camera in our belt and we're going to turn and face players. Uh, if we turn and face players, we should be able to pick this up. So don't don't get too caught up on signaling touchdown that we forget to officiate through the end of the play. Um, so we want to make sure that we pick that up. Uh, linesman, you see on this, we come down uh, after the ball is kicked, which is fine, but I would only come down about uh, five to ten yards uh, at most and then officiate standing still so you can watch blocks and then turn uh, your hips and go when we need to uh, officiate forward progress further up the field. I think we put ourselves out of position on this play. I love the hustle, um, really love that, but it, I think it puts us out of position to officiate the rest of the play. So, um, you know, after about 10 yards, just come to a stop and officiate blocks, and then we can slowly move up field to pick up forward progress if we truly need that spot. But uh, linesmen or line judges, if you're on that side of the field, uh, don't come that far down. The only person we want to release that far is the uh, person that's in the line judge position. But otherwise, good initial position. We reacted well on the bad snap. Back judge comes up not too far, but close enough to... Uh, view action, linesman not so far, come to a stop, and then remember to view players uh, at the end of the play. So again, act like there's a video camera in our belt, turn and face players, that way we can pick this up. Um, we don't want players out on the field without a helmet on. Um, they should only be out there if they're ready to play with a helmet on. So uh, good coverage, uh, just a couple things to clean up, and remember to officiate during the dead ball periods. Okay, a couple things on this play. Third and seven, so we're anticipating pass. The crew does a nice job anticipating this to get in position to rule. Back judge, excellent positioning at the conclusion of the play, right on the goal line. This is exactly where we want to be. The linesman gets down to be in position to assist. So this is very nicely covered by the crew. We're in good initial position at the snap, uh, one yard off the sideline and we react very nicely on this play. So um, nice coverage of the pass. The other piece is um, you can't really tell on the replay, but there is a guy that sneaks through or tries to sneak through, and the offensive player grabs him by the leg and takes him down and is properly called for offensive holding. Um, with our mechanics this year, with the umpire in the offensive backfield right off of where the tight end typically is, um, they probably will have a look at this. In years past with the old mechanic, they may not have seen uh, this hold because it was in the offensive backfield a little bit more near the quarterback. Um, the umpire might have a piece of this now, um, but referees and umpires both, um, when a pass is imminent and the passer is in a passing posture, our vision needs to get to free defenders because they are the most likely threat for a foul. As you see here, when that 
when that defender sneaks through an opening, our vision needs to go to that person because they are either going to get tackled by the offensive players or they are most likely to rough the passer, commit targeting, those kinds of pieces. So um, that's where our vision needs to uh, transition to, and the referee in this case does a nice job of doing that. Um, but this year with the umpire in the offensive backfield, we may have two flags down uh, for this offensive hold. So this is well done. When we're talking about offensive holding, remember we're looking for a material restriction where his shoulders get completely turned, his feet get turned, uh, he gets taken down, grab restrict, uh, hook and restrict. That's what we're looking for for offensive holding. If they play through a grab, we don't want to call that. Um, this, in this one, grabs a hold of the leg, slows him up. This is enough for offensive holding, and we would want this called. Um, but if we see a, a jersey grab, that doesn't necessarily mean it's holding. If they can run through that jersey grab, play through the hook and restrict, uh, we would not want that call. That's not enough, and it needs to be at the point of attack. It needs to affect the play. If the play develops to the right-hand side and they do that on the left, we would not want that called either. So uh, make sure that we, um, when we have holding, it's a major restriction um, because offensive holding in high school football is a major penalty. Okay, third and five here, back against the goal line, so likely pass play. We have a long pass down the sideline, and the kid makes a really nice catch, and we're in good position to uh, view this and rule. So uh, first, back judges, uh, you're likely going to have to take a lot of ownership on a pass like this for catch, possession, um, pass interference. And if you see number three, he's not facing the ball. Um, he's playing the man. However, there's no contact, so therefore we do not have a foul for defensive pass interference. Remember that uh, face guarding is no longer a rule uh, in place. It, there has to be contact for pass interference, and there is no contact here. So this is properly no called for pass interference. Um, for the catch itself, uh, back judges, again, you're going to have to get in position to assist on possession, catch, um, not not the inbounds, out-of-bounds part, but the catch, no-catch aspect. You're going to have to take a lot of ownership on it because it open up opens up to you. A line of scrimmage, remember, we're holding the line until the pass is imminent, and then we should take off. And we are going to be primarily responsible for that first contact um, inbounds. And in this case, you see that first foot uh, inbounds, second foot. We don't need the second foot, but it's there. Um, and then he survives the ground and completes the process of the catch. So this is uh, really nice uh, mechanics, really, really good judgment, and uh, we handle, handle this play very well. So uh, back judges, just be ready to take more ownership on these long pass plays and communicate with line of scrimmage. And line of scrimmage, you're going to have to primarily uh, key on the feet. But overall, nice coverage and nice job of allowing this uh, – receiver to make a nice athletic play. I want to use this play as an example of how we can work with teams on formations, shifts, other non-egregious um, type potential fouls um, that we can try to avoid with uh, preventative officiating and communication. So if you see the tight end at the top of the screen, he does come down into a shift into a three-point stance as the receiver is going in motion to the bottom of the screen. This is not something we want called. We want you to work with the team. Um, give them a warning on this. Say, hey, by the way, your tight end is shifting as the motion man is going in motion you know, see if we can get some time separation between those two things. So um, not something we want called, uh, at least certainly not on the first uh, time that this happens. If it's totally egregious um, where there's two players moving at the snap, then certainly we would want a, an illegal shift called. But in this case, um, let's not pick this apart. Make sure we communicate with the teams. You know, in most years, we do not want 
game stoppers, ticky tack stuff to be called. But especially this year, let's not prolong the amount of time that we're out there. Let's make sure we get big ticket fouls um, and get those taken care of. If you have a formation issue, so um, we have too many players in the backfield, make sure we communicate uh, with the team. Hey, you need to have uh, proper numbers uh, on the line of scrimmage, i.e. Um, not having too many players in the backfield. Um, this is your warning. Um, write that down, you know, communicate that it's a warning, and then the next time it happens, um, then we would have a foul. If it's if it's close where you can put somebody on the line and make them legal, let's do that. Um, if you can see a blade of grass um, of space and they need to be in the backfield, then make them in the backfield. Let's, let's try to make them legal if we can, unless it's so obvious that the formation or the shift is clearly illegal, then we would want to call those without a warning. But if we can uh, have a warning, document that, uh, communicate it with the team, uh, that would be uh, preferred. Um, we don't want the first one of these called uh, with two minutes to go in the game. If we have been communicating with the teams throughout the game, hopefully we can avoid these types of game stopper uh, fouls. Okay, on this last play here, we have a free kick, and I just want to remind our crews of our mechanics on free kicks. So back judges, you're out there uh, with the kicker. Give them the football. Count the number of players. Make sure we have proper number of players on each side of the kicker if we can, and remind them to stay um, onside uh, at the kick. And we want to make sure that uh, no one goes more than five yards behind K's restraining line. The umpire, you're at the 50 initial spot. Remember, all of us are two yards off the sideline, and both the back judge and the umpire, we're going to wait till all of the kicking team players cross our face, and then we will move on to the field um, halfway between the hash marks, somewhere in that half of the field, and we will officiate inside out, officiating at the point of attack on our side uh, with blocks in particular. Okay, You'll see here the umpire, excellent hustle, gets in great position, gets the spot, officiates players. Um, my, my only issue with this is umpires, we should be in the middle of the field officiating inside out. And if the play uh, reaches us, we should let it pass us and we will officiate blocks from behind and clean up. And the responsibility for progress um, and officiating the end of this play is going to be with the back judge who has goal line and the line of scrimmage official on that near side. Um, line of scrimmage officials, we're at the pylon uh, initially. Make sure we're watching kickers prior to the game to know how far they can kick, those kinds of things. Um, but we will move up the field slowly. Make sure we officiate at the point of attack and pick up bad blocks. We're not really worried about forward progress on a free kick. We need to make sure we pick up bad blocks, late hits, and officiate players at the end. Um, let's not worry about the football. Let's not worry about uh, what's going to happen next with the chains. We need to officiate players, make sure we clear them uh, to their sideline before moving on to the next play. So again, I love the umpire's hustle. I appreciate um, him wanting to get down there and get the progress spot and officiate players. But umpires, we should be in the, in the, uh, the field of play, let the play pass us and officiate inside out and responsibility for the goal line is going to be uh, back judge and line of scrimmage officials uh, on a long return such as this. Um, we would be in really good position to officiate blocks and clean up on, on the backside if we were on the inside of the field. So um, again, great coverage, uh, great hustle, um, but for future umpires, let's be in the middle of the field, back judges also, line of scrimmage, um, on the pylons, officiating at point of attack, and referee, you should line yourself up right behind the return man to pick up blocks as well. Okay, that will do it for this week's training tape. I'm glad we get to get out and work some football this week. Wishing you all of the best as you get out there for this first set of games. I know we haven't had practices or scrimmages, um, and this is going to be the first football we see, but we're all in the same boat, and I am confident that officials in Minnesota and our reciprocity officials are going to do a great job out there 
uh, tomorrow night and Saturday uh, to give the kids a great opportunity to play football. So we're excited about that. Stay safe and healthy. Follow all the guidelines so we can keep you for the whole year. And we will see you next week with training tape number two.